First things first, I want to talk about the fact that every time it seems like somebody in Hollywood, we'll call it Hollywood because these are older celebrities, uh, every time somebody comes out on one of these social issues that really are just common sense. In this case, we're dealing with Paul Stanley and we're dealing with John Cleese and the two big crazy issues we're talking about here is that men shouldn't compete in women's sports and maybe we shouldn't they give shouldn't? HRT to kids. Like that's that's we the shouldn't? crazy concept here, guys. It says John Cleese says biological men in women's sports have an unfair advantage. He's He's right. Am I right? Right. So I want to know why is it that it's always these older aging celebrities who say these things? Because they don't know anything. They don't know better. They're trying to fit in. That's what I No, assume. he's saying he, that makes no sense. He's going against what everyone's saying. He's he's actually trying not to fit in right now. What is it? What he said that they, there should not be. Yeah, he says biological men in women's sports have an yeah. unfair advantage. He's going against yeah, the Hollywood narrative. Is he saying that like general? I thought he was talking about just one specific thing. I mean, it doesn't matter. The, the, the idea here is we're talking about is the overarching concept that the only people that ever seem to be able to speak out against this stuff, against common sense or towards common sense, seem to be old. Well, yeah, because they, there's well, there is a certain amount of like. I don't care when you get older because you've either you've made your money, you're just older. It's it's older because I mean, look, I mean, I'm not a spring chicken, you know, yeah. and it's like when I was 21, things seemed other th things that do not seem important to me now seemed vital when I was 21. Mm -hmm. Can now, you give me an example? Uh, I mean, well, <coughs> I mean, telling people on the internet they're wrong. Yeah. Right. Like that seemed like it felt was super like you had important. to do it yeah, all the time. Know? Um, and this is back in the day when it was like, you know, I was on message boards, not even wild, really wild social, yeah, ah, not yes. social media. This we, is the, for us in skating, it was, uh, it was skeptic industries in Minnesota. And then we had what was called roller news, where if you wanted to, if you wanted to lower your self-esteem, you, your skating edits went on roller news. And then you read all of the comments, the comments from people yeah. without names that were all about you suck. Maybe you should go unalive yourself. Yeah, you're yeah. awful. Oh, the, like yeah. that's, that was the majority of what it was. So we were raised at a time where that was that's, the norm. Yeah. I mean, I, so yes, that, that kind of thing, you know, yeah. was real, uh, but when it comes to like older guys and, and specifically, you know, crabby old men is kind of what it really is. It's like dudes that are in, have got to the point where they're just like, I don't have to worry about, like John Cleese doesn't care if he gets canceled because he's not on Twitter all the time. He's no. not on his phone all the time. And I tell you what, when you say something that upsets people and you just mute whatever it is, your life goes on yeah. and you don't even know. Uh, and I have... When what? we were going to DC that one time, and you're like, I just pissed off everyone on Twitter, and then just yeah, mute. and just mute it, yeah. just and then let them rage. Your life does not change, yeah. and yeah. if you mute it, for the most part, your Twitter experience doesn't change either. It, it's like it's just like it didn't even happen. Just mute the thread. Well, if you ever had to babysit a small child, you'll know <laughs> that if they start throwing a tantrum, yeah. You let them scream and cry, and they tire themselves yes. out. Yeah. And it's the same thing for Twitter. But I, I got to push back, Brett. I, you know, the reason that this is news is proof that this doesn't happen enough, right? We, th I don't think there are a ton of old men that don't care anymore. Like, this is news because he's one of the but only saying, people it does, speaking up. When it does happen, it's old people. All of the people... Here, I'll, I'll give you another example. Aside yes. from aside from Paul Stanley. What about was, J.K. Rowling? That's, that, no, that's literally what I'm going to... That was literally what I was about to bring up. So I have a list uh, of oh, all gosh. of the people that supported or, or didn't support J.K. Rowling. You want to know the big difference is the ages between all of the people that didn't support yeah. her and all the people that did. All of the people whose lives she made, meaning Rupert Grint, Emma Watson, and uh, Daniel Radcliffe, they condemn her because they're young. I, I think uh, uh, Rupert Grint might be ambivalent, but Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson condemn her, even though they wouldn't have careers if it wasn't for her. All of the older actors who... For the most part, careers were fine either way. They were already big name actors. They didn't need these roles to be famous. They're the ones who said, you know, I maybe I agree with her, maybe I don't, but you know, she has a right to say what she says. Robbie Coltrane, Hel Helena Bonham Carter, Ralph uh, Ray Fiennes, uh, Jason Isaacs. All of these people are basically saying, like, look, uh, they all kind of. Some of them say I support her. Other people are saying like she has a right to her opinions. But the problem is the younger ones aren't saying that because they've been bred into an ideology yes. that's very different and the ones that are not bred into that ideology even if they uh they're they're scared they're scared to speak up I, I, yeah. you know but for something like this i think there's a large percentage of the uh 
large portion of people too, and you know, percentage of the population that um, this is just an insane thing to even entertain a conversation about, right? It'd be like if all of a sudden everyone's saying the sky is actually red. It's never been blue. It's like, I'm not even going to talk about that. It's, it's ridiculous. Yep. It's nonsense. Why are we ha even having this conversation? I think there's a lot of people that still feel that way about the whole men in, uh, in women's sports. Yep. Either they're in denial and they don't think it's happening or they're like, oh, it's a few one-off cases. It doesn't matter. You know, it, not until we start seeing like their favorite sports stars like LeBron James and Patrick Mahomes. We talked about him yesterday. Yep. And not until they're impacted by this are we going to actually see any well, meaningful hey guys, conversations. Twenty dollars uh, yeah. super chat. Uh, unusable alpaca <laughs> says uh, <laughs> vanilla ice went through the same thing back in the day. I don't know exactly what you're referring to. Yeah, because it might have been a minute ago. Um, long time ago. Are they saying that he went through the same thing? It just says vanilla the, ice went through the same thing back in the day. Uh, I'm not sure what that like means. if we're talking about speaking up, then upsetting then I, people, upsetting or, people. He yeah. he has this great video where he explains why pop culture died in the '90s. I keep meaning to show it on the show here. Oh yeah. Um, but I think all the versions that I keep seeing, they put Ice Ice Baby in the background so uh, you can't use yeah. copy rights struck on it uh but the there is a part of this that I agree with you on, and, and that is that a lot of them don't understand the size of the of the monster that's been bred out of woke culture, right? So right. Paul Stanley goes out and says basically uh, that childhood uh, sexual reassignment surgery is a dangerous fad. That was uh, that 100%. was one hundred percent, and and we all agree. Uh, like to the people with the thirty thousand foot view, you're like, yeah, that's insane. Why would you yes. be doing that? But what they don't understand is the size of the monster that woke culture has now built up and this is proven because d snyder ended up commenting on this and d snyder basically says you know what there was a time when i felt pretty too he wrote glad my parents didn't jump to any rash conclusions well said at paul stanley live now what what's funny about that is the twisted sister were the ones who wouldn't let trump play we're not gonna take it because they wanted to get involved in politics the good the well not the good the predictable thing about the left is if you're on the left now, yeah. eventually you'll be in the center, and then when you're old, you'll be on the right. Yeah. Because that's the way the left works. Yep. So if you think, oh, I'm progressive, <laughs> you have to be consistently progressive because- Forever. The, yeah, the, and the reason is because the, the people that actually, like the thought leaders on the left, the, the people that are actually writing the books in schools and that are coming up with leftist philosophy and, and progressing the left left-leaning ideas, they all believe that the revolution must be con must be constant. Yeah. You can't ever stop having a revolution. Yep. You can't ever stop yep. progressing because if you do, then you become stagnant, then you become calcified, then you become the status quo, then you become conservative. And well, that's what's happening to the, the quote unquote TERFs right now. Right. They used to be progressive feminists, yep. but because the LGBTQ uh, IA plus group has become, has, has basically usurped the yep. intersectional feminist position. Now, trans women are the group that are on the cutting edge of the sociology right. departments, and trans women are saying, hey, we're women, and feminists who spent all this time saying, hey, we're women, and we're blah, 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 and all this stuff, now they want to have female-only space, or well, not now, they want to retain their female-only spaces, and the trans people are like, well, trans women are like, well, I'm a woman. Right. And the turfs are like, yep. no, the F you're not. We've yeah. been fighting to keep men, which is what turfs consider trans women, keep men out of our spaces for so long. And that's what go. That's what happens all the time on the left because the left is a con the, con the dialectic must continue. There's always going to be someone that's going to be criticizing, pulling pulling down pieces of the of the con of the existing structure because the, they're trying to get to the little bit of gold inside and that's the philosophy go ahead uh, i say it's, it's kind of a, a weird um reflection of why our charities are the way they are why are all activist groups go the way they go because you can't uh you can't actually preach for the change you want because then you put yourself out of a job yep uh we got a 19 dollar yep. or a 20 dollar super yep. chat uh martin santiago Please see the chat for my last comment. It wouldn't let me super chat. I wonder why. Hey, Phil. Martin Santiago. All right, we're going to try and find. What, what well, did he say? While you look for his chat, I was going to say, I think 
a big uh, part of why we're seeing what we're seeing and exactly what you're saying, Phil, is how you're, you know, if you're left now, you will become center in five years and so on is it's, it's, you have a whole generation. I'm talking about my generation that was raised on, it's the oppression Olympics, right? So like we want to lift everybody up and, and the people that don't have, we want to, we want to make sure that they have, but the problem is we did that. We accomplished that goal and now there's now they're aimless. So they have to create the oppressed people now. There are no just oppressed people really in the country anymore. So they have to create it through this LGBTQ uh, Q movement because like I think the argument's completely lost. It's like what rights don't yeah. you have? Like there's there's like trans rights or human rights. It's like what? Well, those are all just statements that don't right. actually say anything. Yeah, but like I, I understand that. We got a, a twenty, another twenty dollars super chat uh, from CK. Uh, One hundred percent with Phil here. To say that you're a leftist progressive is akin to saying you have no firm beliefs or values. Exactly. If your core beliefs can invert radically based on the opinion of the day, you don't have real beliefs. It's also funny too because I, I consider myself in a lot of ways still very liberal. It's just that the, the okay. So, but the, the thing is, liberal is not left. No. You're you're a hundred percent liberal, but people the the left has essentially infiltrated uh, the culture producing uh, institutions in society, media, your uh, your schools, yep. um, the, the, the entertainment, entertainment, Hollywood. Exactly. So yep. they've 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 infiltrated and they've been telling people they've been telling liberals that don't understand liberal philosophy really deeply that progressive ideas are liberal. They are not. They are progressive. And those two things are significantly different. Liberalism points to the individual. Progressive indi progressivism points to a collective society that they're they're going that they're progressing towards. I don't even like the term progressive because in the, the root of that word it's progress. But this that's not what they're doing. They're well, it's taking the system, in, say, in lifting it up, and turning it upside down. Yes. That's not progress, right? Like, like kicking women out of their women-only sports yeah. for someone else that's having a crisis, uh, identity crisis, right? That's not progress. That's r like regressing. Well, to you them, know? so I hate when they say they're progressive because it's like you're not for anything. To man. them, they're for the abol. The the reason that they're doing this is it's called gender abolitionism. So they want to abolish the concept of gender. Yeah. They're uh, they they look they want people to abandon man and woman. Mm -hmm. And now I don't think that. Th I'm happy that they're pushing for this because I think it's the, radical. It's so radical that people are going to reject it. Yeah. Just like most people are going to reject it, I think. Um, but that's what they want to do. They they're they're gender abolitionists. They say we don't think that it's people should. And Hollywood is on the front lines of pushing this yeah, right now. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like I, I every time we have to cover an award show and they're like, we don't want best actor and best actress because it's sexist. It's gender. It's, uh, it's ge because it's gendered, right? Uh, I do want to point out that uh, there was a, a tweet here uh, when I pointed out when I wanted to talk about whether these people actually believe the things that they're pushing or whether they're just doing it to go along to get along because that's how they're going to make their money that's how they're going to stay in the favor of the industry right now xavier deruso on twitter he was on irl the other uh, last week uh he's a good dude says 75 percent of influencers actors and actresses i've met in hollywood do not support the woke propaganda going on at some point they'll finally speak out but for now we are going to continue to being being bold and unnormalized canceling anyone who knows that there are only two genders that's been my experience as well we just got a 50 dollar yep. uh, oh wow from Go perturbed it. alpaca Go for it uh just eloped with the love of my life a couple hours ago wow if phil could scream congratulations bobby okay. and ashley that'd be awesome <laughs> Things only tend left when you allow leftists to run the education system or the military. Perturbed Alpaca, you're on to something. Uh, did you see the the Navy the Navy influencer? I, yes, I did. Let me let me do, do this. Hold on, I, you might want to. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Bobby and Ashley. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Cheers. <laughs> awesome. Luckily, I only have one ear I have to cover because I can't hear it in the other. So, yes, congratulations, Bobby and Man, Ashley. That's huge. That's, that's amazing. Cheers, congratulations. Uh, did, did you see the, the Navy influencer? The, I did. Yeah. I yeah, did. It's, you know. uh, did you also see that uh, the guy that was on the Bin Laden raid was like, this is what I fought for. What uh, the hell? Oh <laughs> <laughs> the dude that shot on Bin Laden's like, Man, this is bullshit. <laughs> It's the world we live in now. Right. It's like, thanks. And you know what? That was less than 10 years ago. Thanks, Obama. Yeah. Like, or, oh, no, just <laughs> over 10 years ago because it was, uh, I think it's 12. It was 2011. Uh, by the way, I don't, I, I, yesterday, I don't think anyone got your <laughs> reference when you said, ladies and gentlemen, 
They got him. Really? But that like I that I, was Saddam Hussein. Yeah, but that uh, that we got that one. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's a good one. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. We got. We got. Him. We got him. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.